Okay, so let's say you have two vectors that are three-dimensional. And in this example, we have vector P and vector Q. Now, I've represented these vectors in terms of their components. So you have the PX component, the PY, and the PZ component of vector P, and then the same thing for this vector Q right here. Now, in the last video, we talked about this diagram right here, where if we do cross products of unit vectors, we can use this diagram to figure out what the result is for a cross product of two unit vectors. So if we did I cross J, we would get K, and in the result would be a positive K, because we're going with this arrow, the blue arrow. However, if we did k cross j, we would get i, but this i would be negative because we're going against this blue arrow. So in this video, I want to go through a very quick uh, calculation of what we would, how we would uh, solve this question of solving p cross q. So p cross q, how can we do this with any two vectors that are in 3D space? How can we figure out what p cross q is? given the information that we know from this diagram. Well, what's cool about this is that we can distribute just like we can with multiplication uh, for all of these different components for P and Q. Now, the cross products of those multiplication uh, operations is going to be handled by this diagram right here. So if I said that P cross Q gives us some resultant vector R, then down here, I could say that R is equal to P cross Q, just like that. So we have this vector P right here and this vector Q right here, and all I did was I just drew these out down here, and we are going to do the cross product of these two vectors. So like I was saying, we can sort of use the distributive property of multiplication to figure out what the cross product is. So if in multiplication, uh, we would have two terms like this, we could take that first term and multiply it by the first term of this vector, and then take that same first term and multiply it by this vector, and then once more for this, and then do it all over again for the y and z components. Now, when we do the cross product, of the different components contained inside both of these vectors, we need to resolve them using this diagram. So what I mean by that is, well, let's take the very first uh, operation right here, which would be this px component, or that px vector, times this component right here, qx. So what we would get is px i crossed with qx i. Now, the resultant of this, or the result of this, would be px times qx, right? Because those are just the values of those vectors. And then you have this i cross i. i cross i. Now, what's interesting is, if we look at this diagram, remember in the last video we said if we're going to do the cross product of the same unit vector, so i cross i or j cross j, then... The result is zero because, well, i cross i, the two vectors that you're trying to do the cross product of, the theta between them is zero. And we know that the sign of zero is zero. So therefore, i cross i would be zero. So this term right here would actually just become zero. But that's good because now we've figured out, well, one of these components. We've taken p, p of x crossed with q of x, and we get zero. Okay, let's try the next two. So we'll take that same component here and multiply it with this component here or do the cross product of that. So to zero, we're going to add PXI crossed with QYJ. And the result of this would be, well, PX times QY times I cross J. Well, if we look at this diagram right here, i cross j would give us positive k because we're going with this arrow. So this would just be uh, pxqi times the unit vector k. Okay, awesome. Let's do this one and this one. So to that, we would add pxi crossed with qzk. Now this one's going to be a little interesting because we'll still get that px 
times qz, but we're doing i cross k. So i cross k gives us j, but because we're going against the blue arrow, this j right here is going to be negative. So this right here is going to be negative j. So if we look back at this entire thing that we've calculated, this is just for the px component because we've taken this and multiplied it or crossed it with this, with this, and with this, and we get 0 pxqy times k and then a minus pxqz times j. Okay, that's great. Now we need to move on to this term right here. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to take this py term and we're going to cross it with qx, qy, and qz. So the very first one is going to be py times j crossed with qxi. Well, this gives us py times qx, and this is j cross i. So j cross i gives us k, and we're going this way, so it's going to be negative k. Negative k right there. And then we'll do the same thing. We'll take py and cross it with this right here. And this is also going to be another interesting one because, well, you'll see in just a second, pyj crossed with qyj. And now we're doing the cross product of the same two unit vectors, j cross j. And well, j cross the same unit vector is just going to be 0. So this right here is 0. Now, finally, we do p of y crossed with qz. And that would be p of y, j crossed with qz, k. And here, our term would be py times qz, and then j cross k, j cross k. Well, j cross k gives us i, and we're going with the arrow. So this is going to be a positive i. And then finally, we got to do the same exact thing for pzk, and then all three components for the q vector. So we can quickly do that down here, and I'll say the third line is going to be pzk crossed with qxi, and this just gives us pz times qx, and then k cross i. Well, k cross i gives us positive j. So this will be positive j. And then we'll do the same thing for the second term, pzk crossed with qyj. Now this gives us pz times qy and k cross j. Well, k cross j is going to give us i, but because we're going against the arrow, it's going to be negative. So this is going to be a negative term. And then finally, we're going to take this pz and qz, and we're going to do the cross product of those two. So it's going to be pz k crossed with qz k. And again, because we're doing the same unit vector crossed with one another, k cross k, this is just going to be 0. And so you can see these are the nine terms right here. And we have 0, 0, and 0. And so if I were to group the remaining terms uh, together, then our resultant vector would be something like this right here. So this equation right here is the result of doing p cross uh, q. And all I did was I just took all nine of the terms we calculated up here and I just removed all the zeros because obviously those are just zeros. And this is the equation you end up with. Now, if we group all the i's together, the j's together, and the k's together, then we would get something like this where these are the i components, these are the j components, and these are the k components. Now, what's even cooler is that we can distribute out the, or factor out, the common terms. So in both of these terms, we have the i term, and what we get is, well, py times qz minus pz times qy, all times the unit vector i. And we can do the same thing for the j and the k terms. 
and this is what we would get right here. So this right here is the Rx vector, the x component of this resultant vector when we do p cross q. And this right here is the Ry component, or the Ry vector. And then finally, this is Rz. So you can sort of see that we can do a lot of things like we do in multiplication. We just have to keep in mind the directions or the signs of some of these cross products and realize that some of these terms are going to be zero, others are going to be negative, and others are going to be positive. But this is sort of the generic sort of definition of P cross Q. Any two 3D vectors crossed with one another, you can simply take their components and plug it in, and you'll get the um, Rx or the X component, the Y component, and the Z component of that cross product.